In 1986, the Transformers were riding high. They hit the big screen and scarred a generation of children for life. They began their third full season of the television show, and they hit the tie-in merchandise harder than ever. This included, of course, a new board game for all to enjoy. Published under the Milton Bradley banner, this Transformers game interestingly has no subtitle. It's simply The Transformers Game, a two to four player strategy game that boasted miniature, transforming playing pieces. Unfortunately, as was custom of the time, no designer credit is provided. To set up the game, players place their three generic Transformer figures at the red starting space in vehicle mode. One player is designated the dealer, and they pass five battle cards out to each player. The player to the dealer's left will go first. The objective is to get all three of your Transformer pawns into the yellow headquarters space in robot mode. On a turn, players roll the die and choose one of their Transformers to move the corresponding number of spaces in any direction, backwards or forwards along the tracks. They may not change direction in the middle of movement, however. If a player lands on a blue arrow space, they have the option of taking a shortcut on their next turn. If one of a player's Transformers were to land on a spot already occupied by their own troops, then they must instead move to the space before it. If one player's pawn lands on a space occupied by another player's pawn, a battle will take place. In a battle, each player selects a card to play face down. They then simultaneously reveal their cards. The higher number wins the battle. Battles are played best two out of three. The winner gets to remain in the space and transform their pawn to robot mode. The loser must return their pawn to the red start space and, if applicable, transform back to vehicle mode. Both players then draw back up to five cards. The only exceptions to this are starburst power spaces, the start space, and the yellow headquarters space. These are considered safe spaces, so no battles will take place there. Any number of Transformers can occupy the Starburst space. When you first land on one, a player has the option to discard up to five cards from their hand and draw new ones from the battle deck. The first player to move all three of their Transformers in robot mode to the headquarters space is the winner. Unlike the 1984 release, the Transformers Adventure game, the 1986 Transformers game seems to embrace the theme a little better. The components, though simple, are very cool. Having player pieces that actually transform from one form to another is a real draw for the game, however simple they may be. Choosing to make them generic robots rather than known characters also helps solve the problem of kids fighting over favorites. It's worth noting that the components of this game are certainly showing their age. On my copy, the robot pawns are starting to stress and crack. One of the yellow pawns is completely unusable. This is easily remedied, however, as you could substitute some of the smaller toys in your collection, such as the Micromasters or Minicons, to take their place. The graphic design of the board is easy to follow, and the use of character art from the toy line on both the game box and the board is always welcome. Characters are all over the board, giving the impression that you're in the middle of a giant battle that's raging around you as you attempt to take the prize from the enemy. One thing I like is this game doesn't feel like a generic pass at a licensed property. It does seem like they tried to come up with something unique that really took the theme to heart. The gameplay, though simple and straightforward, did actually offer some strategic choice, and the battles brought some cheers and excitement as you tried to defeat your opponent in a battle of wits. One of the biggest cons of the game is it's very much a product of its time. The roll and move mechanic, though dated, isn't exactly the problem, but more of the restrictions around it. 
The blue arrow spaces, for example, cannot be accessed unless you land on them by exact count. This limits their use severely and renders them almost pointless. Having to land exactly where the opponent is in order to engage in a battle is difficult when you are relying purely on the chance of a die roll. Where I did enjoy the battle mechanic, I found the random distribution of cards to be a problem. If one player keeps drawing lower cards, they are very unlikely to win a battle let alone best two out of three, so they will continue to lose. But my largest gripe has to do with how the game treats the act of transforming as a penalty rather than an advantage. Instead of embracing the key feature of the toy line and its characters as a showpiece to set this game apart, it treats it as a punishment for the player and only allows you to change into robot mode by winning battles, forcing you back into vehicle mode by losing and setting the odd victory condition of having to be in robot mode to enter the headquarters. The Transformers game actually has a few good ideas to work with. It just needs a little rearranging and tweaking, with little to no component changes needed. To start, I would change the game to be a two-player game, with possibly a 4-2 versus 2 variant. In my version, each player starts on opposite sides of the board, changing the red start space into another headquarters. The objective would be to gain majority control of the other player's base. Players would be given the option of transforming their characters at the start of their turn, and each mode would have an advantage over the other. Vehicle mode would allow greater movement in the form of rolling two dice, while robot mode would offer greater strategic advantage by being able to attack adjacent spaces, but suffering less movement with only one die. The battle system would be tweaked too. Instead of dealing out a random hand of cards, each player would have a preset hand of one through five. Battles would play the same, though just one victory would be enough. However, instead of discarding and drawing back up, players would place the used cards in front of them. They would pick up their cards once all cards had been used or if they lost a battle. The winner could then banish the loser's piece to a starburst space of their choosing. Victory would be secured once a player has majority control of their opponent's headquarters. Another option would be to change out the D6s for two D4s to mitigate the movement a little. As I said, there's a lot of potential in this game for improvement. And out of the box, it was still an enjoyable experience. I have to applaud at least the attempt to incorporate the theme as much as they did, despite missing the mark. The 1986 Transformers game, though generic in title, certainly had more than meets the eye to offer. Though, admittedly, not much more.